He came to South Korea to study nuclear science at the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology that played a key role in the transformation of South Korea from a poor nation to an industrialized nation. I landed here in 2014 in September, mm. very cold. <laughs> During Win winter? Winter was just about to begin, yeah. but then winter about to begin in Korea is basically June in our country. Mm. That's Agar Omondi sharing his story on Daring Abroad. Welcome, I'm Alex Chamwada. Agar Omondi has been living in South Korea for over four years now. He is among the Kenyan students benefiting from the scholarships given to Kenya by Korean learning institutions. His area of specialization is nuclear science, and he begins by giving us some basics about nuclear power. Nuclear power in particular, mm. this is a design that the original design was imported from the US, mm -hmm. but because of uh, domestication of technology, this was the end result. Okay. This is the most recent uh, iteration of something called the APR. Mm -hmm. And the APR is very impressive because it has something called the passive safety system mm -hmm. that was designed by Korean professors here at KAIST. So, so what is this? So this, this is the nuclear plant. And it's, it's a model nuclear plant. Yeah, it's a model nuclear, nuclear, nuclear plant, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And you have the various components. You have the reactor mm -hmm. yeah. where all the... Mm -hmm. Uh, nuclear reactions happen, mm -hmm. then you have the steam generators mm -hmm. that put up the steam and it's sent to the generator mm -hmm. which is up there. up there, then it turns a turbine and you have your electricity. Uh -huh. How did you land in South Korea? The thing is in 2014 mm -hmm. I was a student at uh, the University of Nairobi and it was around the time when the pre previous president of Korea mm -hmm. was visiting East African countries forging ties. Mm -hmm and I got to learn that the admission team for this institution mm. were are looking for students. Mm -hmm. And I applied, and that's how I ended up here. What, what interested you in this? What inspired you to think coming this far, South Korea? Yeah, I'd actually been following up on like the history of the world because I play video games, mm -hmm. so I, I learned a bit of history from the video games. I had an idea of uh, Korea's history, like the shift from being an agricultural country to an industrialized mm -hmm. nation from the games I used to play. And so it felt very attractive for someone like me who was studying engineering and the field that I got when I was studying back at home was not really that it was something leading to something else. Mm -hmm. It felt very like a dead end. So it was more of me looking for continuation in my education, right? Mm -hmm. And how did you come? Are you on scholarship? Are yes. you paying fees for yourself? Yes, I'm on a full scholarship mm -hmm. here. My undergraduate was fully paid and the scholarship is the tuition, mm. they pay the tuition and you also get a stipend, a monthly stipend. Um, you also get uh, a few opportunities to work, the few jobs you can do around, you get to do research and you can get a bit of remuneration. So, very so good deal I think. Is, this a, is it a university scholarship, a scholarship from this university? Yes, it's from this university specifically. Uh -huh. mm. So how did you get it? Many Kenyans um, I believe are admiring you and they're like, how can I be like Omondi and get that scholarship? I think Kenyans, we don't really apply for scholarships to this part of the country, right? Everybody when they think of scholarship, they think of the US uh -huh. and the UK. People don't really look at the East Asian countries as a potential place where they can uh, follow their academic dreams. Uh, in KAIST's case in particular, the admission process is one of the simplest mm -hmm. there is. Mm -hmm. It just involves filling a couple of forms on the internet, uh, spending the equivalent of 6K, sending your documents here, and you wait. Here in South Korea, Omondi had to get used to winter and summer, weather seasons he had never been exposed to. Our visit here coincided with the temperate season that is known as spring, following winter. A time when these trees, known as sherry blossoms, flower, symbolizing the beauty, warmth and abundance that comes with spring. Winter about to begin in Korea is basically June in our country, mm -hmm. so it was quite cold. Mm -hmm. But then I realized things can get a lot colder mm -hmm. as the years progressed. Back to Omondi's studies and he explains that he transferred some of the courses he had been undertaking 
at the University of Nairobi to KAIST. I'd finished my first year. I was about, just about to start my second year. Uh -huh. Yes. And you transferred the courses to this place? A, a few of them. So what were you studying at the University of I was of studying Nairobi? electrical engineering, mm -hmm. kind of related to nuclear engineering. Uh, so it wasn't really that a huge, much of a jump. But because the courses that I'd already done at the University of Nairobi were very basic courses, I was able to make that shift very easily. Okay. I graduated with the Bachelor of Science in Nuclear and Quantum Engineering. Mm -hmm. So nuclear engineering has to do with specifically the nuclear power plants, mm -hmm. and quantum engineering is more of the medical side, the X-rays, the use of gamma rays, the use of protons to image the body. Yeah. So, but for me. Uh, my interest is more towards the nuclear side, where it's power generation, mm -hmm. right? nuclear power plants, and the use of uh, radionuclides to help in agricultural production, in the preservation of food, and stuff like that. Uh -huh. Yes. Which year did you graduate? Yeah, the, your first uh, degree? Last year. You graduated last year? Yes. Now you're doing masters? Yes. Okay. The medical side is very saturated, to be truly honest. Mm -hmm. So many people are studying medical physics, uh, but for me, I think the thermal side is not really uh, known back mm. in our country. Mm. And hopefully in the future when the nuclear power plant is being built back at home, hopefully I'll be involved. So how does Omondi hope to transfer his knowledge and skills to Kenya? That's next after our Miles Away segment. Today on Miles Away, we focus on Dajan City, where KAIST is found. Dajan is located in the central region of South Korea and has a population of about 1.5 million. The city is led by Mayor Hyo Taijong, who took office in July of 2018. Dajan is approximately 140 kilometers from Seoul. The city is filled with interesting and scenic places to visit. One such place is Hanbat Aboretum, a top tourist destination for picnic goers and bike riders. Another such place is Dajan Museum of Art that has been in operation since 1988. Dajan is also home to 19 universities and around 30 government-funded research institutes, making it a hub of research and development. Similar to Nairobi, Dajan is a major transportation hub. And that's miles away. My name is Michael Zimanji. This is basically a history of KAIST from its inception when it was first proposed. Agar Omondi, a nuclear science student at the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, continues to share his story on daring abroad. And I sought to find out how he hopes to apply his knowledge in Kenya. If we're going to build our nuclear power plant, the secondary side is going to be very important. That's where most of the accidents happen. So part of my research is safety, specifically for that side. And because it's on a side that is not really specific to nuclear, it's across the board, it can also be applied to coal. Mm. I saw on the internet that Kenya wants to build a coal power plant in Lamu. So quite a number of options for me. In Kenya, there is a body that is tasked with promoting the development of nuclear power. It is known as the Kenya Nuclear Electricity Board and Kenya is still at preparatory stages when it comes to nuclear power generation with the Nuclear Regulatory Bill now in Parliament. The bill will pave the way for the establishment of a nuclear regulator in Kenya. The Kenya Nuclear Electricity Board is in the process of developing human resource and identifying potential sites. Omondi already has a deep understanding of what to consider when looking for potential sites. The most important things are you need the bedrock to be very stable, somewhere where there's no seismic uh, activity like earthquakes and all that. And you need it to be close to a large body of water so that cooling can happen. You have, you, your nuclear reactors have to be cooled, have to be cooled throughout. Okay. So there are a couple of places that were suggested. I had Lamu was suggested. I had uh, close to Lake Victoria, not sure exactly where it is. I think safety, uh, it has a lot more to do with communication. There hasn't been a very good job of the scientists and the researchers communicating to the people exactly what it is nuclear power is about. Right now, the current generation of nuclear power plants, like the type that my research is dependent on, does not really worry about safety. They're very well engineered, partly because of the work that the professors at this institution are working on. Um, 
Yes, I, I don't really think that safety is that much of an issue. The things that we can be worried about is in the building process, are we going to ensure that the materials we use to build our nuclear power plants are the very best or are they things that are going to become outdated after a couple of years? Mm -hmm. So nuclear science is one of those sciences where you have to be on the cutting edge, mm -hmm. right? You can't afford to fall back. Uh, technologies that were very relevant in the 1980s are right now obsolete. And in a separate interview, Kenya's ambassador to South Korea, Mohamed Gelo, emphasized knowledge sharing as a key aspect of the bilateral relationship between the two countries. Uh, to date, we have trained over 30 Kenyans in nuclear, in nuclear science at King's, uh, that is Korea International Nuclear Graduate uh, uh, School, which is in a city called Ulsan. And it's a hands-on uh, uh, university which is located where most of the Korean nuclear power plants are located. So not only do they get the theory, it is the power plants are there. And 20% uh, uh, of the foreign students at that university are Kenyans. If the priority of Kenyans is to have access to cheap, safe, and practically renewable energy, nuclear is definitely the way to go. Now, uh, what's your plan? Are you going to go back to Kenya when you finish your studies? Definitely. Mm. But my immediate priority is hopefully to also do PhD. That's the story of Agar Omondi, who wants to use his knowledge in nuclear science to help transform Kenya. We, the Daring Abroad team, wish him the best as he continues with his studies in South Korea. <laughs>